What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today we're going to be doing another pistol review. And we're going to be talking about the Bursa Thunder 380. Now this is going to be another quick review. This is another one of those guns that I borrowed from my buddy when I was cleaning them. But I had the opportunity to shoot this quite a bit more because I have a surplus of 3 ammunition. So I got plenty of rounds through this while we were reviewing it. I also have a good amount of experience on the uh, original pistol, I guess, of this style, which is the PPK. I owned a PPK quite a while ago and I really like it. So this one kind of excited me and I've been looking to buy this anyway. So this is a single stack pistol, as you see here, uh, which means that it, it basically holds eight or seven plus one, depending on what variant you get or what mag magazine you get. As you can see there, even the grips are pretty thick, but the magazine well is relatively skinny. It is a 380, which is a little underpowered, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, it's a two-tone metal framed uh, pistol. I think the uh, top is steel and the uh, frame there is an alloy, kind of a lighter weight alloy. It has a uh, safety and a decocker, as you can see there. Put the hammer back, safety down, and it decocks. However, it also acts as a safety, as you can see there. So, won't do anything as long as that's on. Pop it back, however, single action trigger works. It's got uh, three dot night sights, as you can see right there. Or sorry, regular sights. It's got three dot regular sights. I don't believe they're night sights. And they're relatively low profile, although you can still use them pretty well. Uh, you can see in the video that I shot at a pretty good distance with this pistol. As I said before, it is double single action. And what that means is it has the ability to fire with a longer trigger pull, as you can see here, which is kind of a safety feature of a pistol, if you want to call it that. You can carry it without having to switch off or on a manual safety. You still have that long trigger pull to protect yourself from negligent discharges. And then if you wanted to make a precise shot, you could simply pull the hammer back and you could pull the trigger. Also, even if you fire in double action, if you fire that first round, the slide will come back and it will allow you single action for the remaining rounds in the magazine. Well, it's got some removable grips that uh, sometimes have a tendency to remove themselves, which we'll talk about here in a second. Uh, they also have a double stack version of this pistol. I think it's called the Combat Plus, uh, which you might also want to look into. I don't really see a downside to the Combat Plus, considering this is such a wide pistol for a single stack. In the first place, you might as well go for the double. Uh, as I said before a little bit earlier, maybe I alluded to it, that this is kind of a clone of the original Walter PPK, which is Bond's gun, if you didn't know. So it's a pretty famous pistol. It's been around for, man, almost 100 years now, I believe. And uh, But it's not an exact clone. It's, uh, it's a little bit bigger, I think. I think it's a little bit longer, and I think it's a little bit wider. It's definitely wider, because on my PPK, uh, the grips were recessed into the frame, and on this, they get a little bit bigger. Now, that's not so bad. That's simply just personal preference. You know, whichever one you like better, that's the one you should choose. Uh, this pistol is designed, in my opinion, for concealed carry, uh, for number one. Uh, number two, I think it's marketed kind of as a uh, girl gun, a little bit here or there. You know, get this for your wife, because it's a pretty looking gun. It's got decent looks to it, and it's got a lot of history. Uh, it's also marketed towards the PPK crowd. If you don't want to spend $700 on a PPK, you could drop about $250 on this, which is another thing we'll talk about. Uh, another option, since it's so cheap, kind of a budget gun, is that you could use it for a truck gun. Now, a lot of people like to use a SCAR, Benelli M4 for a truck gun, but I like to use a cheaper pistol in case I forget my concealed carry pistol or something for that day. I could stow this guy as long as I have a holster, and I could carry that. So this is a blowback operated pistol. Basically, what that means is I'll do the takedown here really quick. It's got a takedown lever here, which is a little more of a upgrade from the PPK. Pop that back, pull the slide up, and you just pull it off. Now, as you can see there, unlike a Glock where you have the spring and the uh, barrel inside the slide, this is pretty much attached. Now, this spring is going to be a little bit more difficult to get off than your other, than normal springs because as a blowback design, it's usually caught there. And I don't consider this a worse or a better design, really. It's just different. Uh, it's made in Argentina. It's got a 3.5 inch barrel. Uh, it's got an alloy frame and a steel slide. It's 20 ounces. Uh, which we'll talk about here in a second again, and its total length is 6.6 .6 inches, height of 4.7 inches, and a width of 1.3. 
uh, the reliability was 100%. I have to admit I was rather impressed, especially for a gun that retails at $230 and is a 380. I was really impressed at how reliable it was. I also shot this in the winter, it was right around 30 degrees or so, and I was using uh, Freedom Munitions ammunition, and I was really impressed. I think I used some American Eagle also. But again, 100%, which is odd for its price point and its caliber. Accuracy was also pretty impressive considering it was a 380. And one of the reasons for that is because it's big for a 380. It also has relatively nice sights for a PPK. I don't know if you've ever shot that. No, it has a lot of history, but it is a little hard to shoot for most people. And the reason for that is because the sights are pretty rudimentary. However, these aren't too bad. Also, I think it has a better trigger than the PPK. Uh, the single action trigger is pretty impressive, uh, especially for a budget pistol. Double action, I mean, you could use it up close. I wouldn't want to shoot it at 50 yards with double action, but we shot it quite a bit at 35, 40 yards, and I could hit almost every time. So pretty impressive for the size of pistol that it is. Uh, if you compare it to a popular option here, now this is uh, my G42, as you can see, if I lay my G42 over top of it, it is definitely bigger and it's definitely heavier. I think the G42 unloaded is 13 ounces and the Bursa Thunder here is 20 ounces. Now comparatively, you could get yourself a nine millimeter like the G43 and even that is about 17.5 ounces. So even though it's a 380, it is still bigger and heavier than a lot of the uh, polymer framed nine mils that you could uh, choose to carry. So that's just something to keep in mind when purchasing this pistol. Uh, the ergonomics were pretty impressive as well. I like how they feel, but again, I knew that already because I like how the PPK feels. Uh, it's got an undercut trigger guard there. It's got a longer beaver tail, which is all right. The grips feel pretty good. I did have an issue with the grip falling off. I didn't want to Loctite it because this isn't my pistol, but it did fall off twice while I was on the range, so I got lucky enough that I found the screw. A lot of guys will probably, again, either buy this for a concealed carry or for uh, a gun for their girlfriend. Uh, two things that I would have to say about that. Number one, I wouldn't concealed carry this. I just would. Uh, if you can hit with it, by all means, conceal carry with it. If you own it and you really, really like it and you want to carry it, don't take my advice. I just, from a blank slate perspective, don't see why you would carry this. If you could carry something like this, which is a nine millimeter with a more powerful cartridge, that's probably more reliable and you could get away with it for less weight. Uh, the other issue that I had with this, especially for a girl gun or a gun for your wife, is going to be the fact that it's a little more complicated to operate. When I gave this to my wife, she didn't really like it because of the safety decocker thing and the double action, single action thing. Traditionally, people that haven't shot that much like it as simple as possible. And if you give them something like a Glock or a Smith & Wesson shield or something like that where they can just point and pull the trigger, they like that a little bit better. Uh, the other issue I have with the pistol is the fact that it is a little snappy for being as large it is, as it is and for being a 380. Now, it's not a big deal, but it just surprised me a little bit. Now, other than that, I consider this a pretty fantastic pistol, honestly. I was really surprised at how well it operated. It's 100% reliable, number one. It's $250, number two. And number three, it's extremely accurate. Uh, I shot it again 35 to 50 yards and didn't have barely any issue. So what more do you want from a $200 pistol? I mean, I would like it to be lighter, but other than that, what really more could you ask for? If you had to ask me right now, what would I give it a 10 you know, out of 10? I would have to give it at least a nine out of 10. Uh, for the price point that it is, pretty awesome. Uh, if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. Check you later.